So I welcome each one of you to the second session of relationship counseling. I hope everyone is doing well. So fine friends in the last uh, session. We had talked about or we had briefly discussed about uh, the types of um, abuse and OK, can can anyone just uh, recap for me what we had discussed? I think that will be a good. Uh, um, yeah, that'll be a good practice. OK, so each one of you just write down uh, in short what all we had discussed in the last session or in the last class. Just short me, OK, you don't need to like ex elaborately explain everything. Just the headings would also be OK. Hmm. Good, Sudeep. Yes, yes. Red flags, green flags, very good. Yes. Types of moon, cold moon. Very nice. So each one of you has gone through the recording also, I guess. OK, 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 so I need not. OK, thank you. I think each one of you remembers what we had done. Uh, fine. So now after last part was solely on how. A person in the relationship makes the other person feel OK. Uh, we still had some part of it which will continue today. So we'll be doing bread crumbing, stonewalling, negging, gaslighting today. So let us first start with bread crumbing. OK. Yes, yes. OK, fine. So what is bread crumbing? OK, so I think each one of you has seen a bread. So what is crumbs? Crumbs is those small particles of the bread that falls down. OK, when you're trying to pick up a piece of or a loaf of bread. There are those small powdery particles of the bread that falls down. That is known as crumbs. So. Think of it. Um, is bread is the piece of bread big or is or are the small particle crumbs big? Which one is big bread or the crumbs? Please write it down because that is how the concept is related. The chota chota powder type jo particles hai, wo zyada bade hai, ya jo ekdam bread ka tukda hai, wo bada hai. Bread. Correct. 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 Purnima, Sudeep, Vijay have given the correct answer. Yes. Now, friends, what is bread crumbing? Bread crumbing is in a relationship. There's a person A, there's a person B. The person A will always make the other person feel important. OK, but when it is about acting on it, the person will not show up. For example, the person will tell that, you know, you're so important for me, you're so important to me. And even if there is some work, I'll leave that and come for you if you need me. Uh, you know, even if I'm in a very busy meeting, I'll take your call. I'll call you back. But when in reality that situation comes up, the person never takes up the call. The person is never available. The person um, whatever the person says, the person does not do it. OK, so like the person would say, I'm always there for you, but in reality, he would not be there. He would say that, OK, let's make this plan. Let's go here. Uh, I want you to I want to take you to a very nice place because you're so important uh, to me. And then he does not take out the time to materialize that plan. OK, so this is known as bread crumbing. Uh, see. Bread crumbing means Whenever your partner wants to, uh, you know, wants some validation from you or let's say wants some time from you, what you do is you start giving them something which looks valuable on face. So I make these very lofty promises. I make these very heavy promises. I make these uh, commitments which sound very good. But when it comes to reality, I do not do it. So what is the crumbing here? Crumbing here is throwing small, small pieces of 
say bread or some crumbs in front of a person so that the person thinks that yes this relationship is going to work and i should put in effort and my partner is really trying to work hard for me but in reality the other person does not take it seriously and he does only that much just to keep the relationship going he will make plans but not stick to it uh, he will start the discussion but not participate um, he will uh, let's say uh, he will ask you to do something he will ask you that let us do something together and he'll drop out so this is known as bread crumbing okay so this can be a very very frustrating situation because the other partner always remains confused whether the person really likes me or does not like me one one part of this person will say no no he likes me because he took all these efforts he made plans you know he sat up all night he talked to me about all this so definitely he likes me but the other part would say no he does not like me why because what where whatever we are planning it's not turning into action it's not materializing okay so this is known as bread crumbing so uh, is it understood by everyone or uh, please uh, give me a yes or a no as as the situation is false promises yes somebody correct okay friends now i I would like you to take one minute and just write down, has this happened with you? Are you the person who has ever done breadcrumbing or are you the person who has ever received this from somebody? Please write it down. Be honest to yourself and please write it down. I'm giving you one minute. Since we'll be talking about therapy today, uh, let's just see whether you know we we have also faced this or not so if you are doing it with someone or if somebody is doing it with you please take one minute and write it down no need to tell anyone just write it down for yourself if yes in which sphere in which sphere basically is it while you are trying to make a plan and go out so this is what what you are doing or is it about sharing any emotional moment or something just write it down Okay, Asma, you need not put it here. You can just write it for yourself. Friends, you can write it for yourself. You don't need to put that in the chat. It's just for you so that you realize whether such things have happened with you and are you passing it off in your life thinking it's a very normal um part of a relationship please understand the entire purpose of conducting this workshop is to make you realize that there are many things which are not normal and you should realize them and you should be in a position to take a stand for yourself and to you know be led in a better direction okay that is why all the activities, all the worksheets here are individual. You don't need to tell anybody anything. You need to do that yourself and you need to um, take that realization upon yourself only. Okay. There's one more uh, uh, aspect to it. They'll only compliment you when they want something. They'll only tell good things about you when they want something in return. So include that as well, okay, in your activity right now. Fine, so I think uh, we are done. We can move to the next aspect. Yeah, okay. So now we come to the second aspect, which is very damaging to a relationship. Many a times we don't understand this is happening with us, which is a very sad sign. Uh, you would see, um, you'd see especially uh, nowadays, you see because uh, people's opinion now has gone 
um, so much uh, viral, you say, uh, you can say on Instagram, YouTube. Now people have more platforms to express themselves. OK, so uh, there you would see so many people. They realize that these things were happening after seven years, eight years of marriage, after five, six years of relationship, after three, four years of being together. So all this while this was going on, but they realize it much later thinking that it's a very normal part of a relationship. So what is gaslighting? I talked about this before also. Gaslighting is when the when a person in there are two persons like let's say A and B will refer to as A and B. So when, let's say the person A always tries to distort the perception of person B or let's say whatever the person B says the person A always negates it. OK, suppose the person B would say, do you, do you know this is how I feel? Then the person A would say, no, what you're feeling is not right. OK, OK, this is what I saw. No, what you're seeing is not right. OK, uh, this is where I want to go because it's a good place. No, no, you, that, that's wrong. I don't think you have the correct information. OK, so whatever the person B says, person A negates it. So what happens over the time? The person does not stop loving A, but the person stops loving himself or herself because he's always in self-doubt. He's always in confusion as to what I am seeing, I am perceiving or what I know, whether it is correct and as per the standards of the society or not. So the person always stays very unhappy and more than that, the person's reality is always distorted because why does this happen? Because the person gets the feedback back from somebody whom the person trusts a lot, whom the person believes in. OK, so that is why the person remains very confused and out of everything, gaslighting is one of the most dangerous uh, things that actually hampers the physical health of a person as well. OK, so that is this is gaslighting. So uh, just uh, recollect if this has ever happened with you or you consciously or unconsciously have done it with somebody here. I do not mean if you have disagreed with somebody on a certain occasion or you have disagreed upon with somebody uh, for a uh, common choice of food or common choice of sport. That is not gaslighting, friends. Gaslighting is not a disagreement. Please understand. Let's say you want to eat Indian food and somebody wants to eat, let's say, Chinese food and you both disagree. Friends, that is not gaslighting. Gaslighting is something that continues over a period of time where anything that you say, the other person says that, no, this is not right. You are not making the correct decision. You are not able to see things in the in a proper light. You are not somebody who's giving me a correct direction. You are not somebody who can guide others well. You are not, so it, it 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 is just not about one event or one decision. It is it as per person A. This is pervasive in all the areas of your life. So in all the areas you are not doing well. You do not have a sense of proper judgment. So the person basically puts you down telling that your way of looking things is not correct. OK, so this is gaslighting. So has this happened with you? Just take one minute and think about it. You being the person A or you being the person B. Just think about it, friends. Is this clear? Is gaslighting clear? Yes, Sudeep, we can say that. Yes, but here it is not about being perfect, uh, a perfect wife or let's say perfect companion. It is about negating what the other person feels. OK, here you're not setting a standard. Rather, you are saying that the other person cannot reach to a perfect standard because he has none or he does not have a clear picture of a standard. OK. OK, friends.
Okay. Then we come to the third aspect. Okay, that's a very good question. Do parents also gaslight their children? Friends, what's the answer to this? What do you think? Does this happen? Let all answer. I'll give you the correct answer after that. The person who gaslights does not do it unconsciously. He does it very consciously because there is something known as us being assertive. What is assertive? Assertive is putting your point across. OK, uh, let, I'll, I'll give you an example. Let's say I am somebody who does who does not like or let's say for medical reasons, I cannot have salt namak okay let's say i'm suffering from bp blood pressure i cannot have namak my partner on the other side prefers sea fish or seafood now if he tells me that you should try seafood because really very tasty and you know it it, it actually keeps you healthy and i say that nahi, hai, maybe seafood is good but you know it's not good for my health now if my partner says see you should Okay, if you don't want to eat it today, it's fine. You can leave it. But I think we both should just look up and see if there's any alternative to it. Or let's say if you want to try it, um, maybe we can have some altered recipe of it or something. This is a healthy relationship. But if your partner tells me that, you know what, you have no taste in food. You know what, you only want to have this kind of food always. You don't have any standard any taste or any any um you can say um, any craving to try something new so this is gaslighting my friend the second one is definitely gaslighting it is not being assertive it is down right on the face insulting and trying to make someone feel not good enough is this clear i don't know who asked the question i'm sorry Asha, if I'm reading your name right, is that clear? Yeah, okay, fine. Okay, friends, my question was, uh, sorry, somebody's question was uh, whether parents do it. Friends, uh, parents do it when parents are abusive in their parenting. Number one, there is uh, there are actually four types of parenting. We'll not go into it because that will be, uh, that will take very long. But there are some, there are some, uh, there is a parenting style called avoidant parenting. Okay, avoidant, where the parents do not want to take any responsibility of the children because they think they have done enough and the child is not growing as per their expectations or the child is not, um, you know, uh, the, the child is not showing um, uh, what were you development or you can say the child is not not up to their standards of thinking and perception so what they do is they slowly slowly detach from the child first they'll detach physically slowly slowly they'll detach uh, emotionally they become very hostile they become very critical uh, they're critical avoidant parents and then this gaslighting happens especially this happens when the child uh, reaches puberty because before that the child never shows any sign of feeling bad or hurt he might feel but he never expresses so what happens it is gaslighting from the side of parents but the child does not have very elaborate um, you can say reaction so uh, it just happens as an episode just one episode and then the child cries or you know the child leaves that room and goes away and it's over but as the child grows up as he, as he or she reaches puberty and this happens uh, now that's a that's an episode there that you know, the parent will say something then the child will say something there's argument sometimes there is hitting also sometimes there is um, uh, other other ways of violence so all of that is gaslighting it does happen it happens with critical avoidant parenting okay is this clear friends Yes, about narcissistic behavior will come. Stonewalling is a very good example uh, of what narcissist uh, narcissist people do. So narcissist people are those uh, generally who only 
think about themselves, who love themselves, who can't think beyond themselves. See, narcissist, uh, narcissist uh, uh, okay, basically refers to somebody who is in love with their appearance, okay? So, a person will think, I am the most good-looking person. There's nobody else who's as good-looking as me. Uh, that is only for the appearance sake. But when you um, transcend that meaning into psychology, it is about, I am only right. I only know what is uh, good. I only have a good taste. I only know how to, uh, you know, um, you know, recognize people and their intentions. So it's I, I, I everywhere. Okay. So what is stonewalling? Stone. See, since just imagine this way, you think you are the best, or you think you are very good. So would you want to mingle with the crowd? Would you think that the crowd and you are on the same platform or same stand? Or would you think that you're better than the crowd? I hope everybody got the question. When you are a narcissistic personality, you think you are good in everything. You are the best. So, and there's a crowd. You are one and there's a crowd. So, you think the crowd is as good as you or the crowd is different and you are best in them? Yes. So, he thinks that he is better than the crowd. So, if he is better than the crowd, he would never want... He would never want the crowd to come in contact with him because he's the best. So what he would do, he'll build a wall around himself. Okay, so that is known as a stone walling. He would build a wall around himself, not, not in physical terms, but wall matla, I will make a wall and I'll stay within it and I'll only consider my decisions, my perceptions, um, my judgments, everything mine. No, nobody's influence should ever reach me. So every uh, influence, everything is outside, is outside that wall. It will never reach me. So that is known as stonewalling. So this happens in a relationship. Let's say when a person A, he does not or cannot take the point of view of person B. Whatever the person, whatever a person B will say, person A will say, no, I cannot take it. I cannot negotiate. I cannot compromise. I cannot, uh, you know, support you. If it is not, if I don't feel like I will not support you. If you are trying to influence me into taking a decision, I will not do that. If you want me to sit and listen to you about this, I will not do it. Because at the end of it, I know that what I was saying was right. Okay, so this is stonewalling. So think, have you ever come across such a person or been in any such relationship where let's say you have faced such a kind of person and you have thought that the person is stubborn and it is quite okay to pass this off as a very normal aspect of a relationship. Think about it, friends. You might be still dealing with such kind of people in your life and you might be thinking it is, it is very much okay because the person is not hurting me. See, these persons don't hurt you directly. Why? Because they're so full of themselves. They are so much engrossed in themselves they're so much absorbed in themselves they would want to keep themselves happy they would not want to hurt you matlab they would give time to themselves to be happy but they will not give time to the to others to hurt them or to criticize them correct is this understood so think if you have such a kind of a person in your life Think. Yes. So some people are saying yes. Good. Yeah. Recognize such people in your life. Okay. Next, we come to something known as negging. I'm pretty much sure this happens much more uh, frequently. Much, this is much more common, but um, I'm sure many of us have not noticed it or many of us think that the person who does it is pretty good with his words. So they think that this is very smart, but actually this is also 
something that can disturb you and this is something also that can create a distance between two persons okay between person a and person b now what are negging negging are ironical statements okay on one side you are complimenting the person at the other end the compliment feels somewhat like an insult so let's see some examples okay wow you are actually pretty smart that means you are actually pretty smart so what is pretty means here and i didn't expect you to be this smart number one pretty smart means you don't reach to the standard of smartness but well, you are somewhere close and i appreciate that because i didn't expect you to even reach there also okay so wow you are actually pretty smart second you can be so beautiful when you have makeup on what does that mean generally you are not beautiful as per my standards but you can look beautiful if you have makeup on okay so at one hand it feels like a compliment on the other hand it feels like a criticism uh let's come to the fourth one especially happens at workplace i am surprised you did so well on that presentation now you did well on that presentation that's the positive part but the person is surprised why he didn't expect that from you the next line who helped you with it he is pretty much sure she is pretty much sure that you could not have done it yourself there must be somebody who must have helped you with it okay um last one i don't usually go for women like you but for you i'll make an exception that means i have a preferable benchmark and i consider to mingle with only these kind of women or these kind of people um, but for you i am making an exception that means it's not that you are so good i am forgetting my benchmark it's just i'm lowering it down or i am just changing my you know values of my benchmark so that i could include you in so could you all see they are all they all appear as compliments in the first phase but when you dig deeper they have a tint of criticism can you feel it friends please give me your comments has this happened with you has this happened with you and you feel the person is very tactical at conversations and speaks well rather than getting the hint that the person is criticizing you it's like sarcasm yes it's like sarcasm but it's a little more damaging than sarcasm sarcasm is something where generally both of the persons enjoy it because it comes with a pinch of humor as well right nagging does not come with a pinch of humor it comes with a pinch of criticism and it is directed at one single person by another person there is the difference okay somebody asked uh, can stonewalling be done by introverts see introverts uh, don't do stonewalling they get into a shell they do not see what is what is stonewalling stonewalling is you are full of yourself what is an introvert introvert is the person is not full of himself but the person gathers all information all experiences everything through himself only he does not feel the need to go out and take the information correct so at one part being an introvert means you do not have to be critical of others you do not have to be away from others okay whereas being a narcissistic means it is me and only me whereas an introvert the person he would be uncomfortable in the presence of others but it does not mean that he would disagree with them it does not mean that he would look down upon them correct so there's a difference whoever asked the question sorry i'm forgetting the name 
Jay or somebody else. Yeah, Jay, I think. Yeah. So next is friends invalidation. Um, invalidation means this. See, uh, if you ask me what is invalidation, I would first ask you what is validation? <laughs> OK, so what is validation? Validation is. Getting. An affirmation or getting an affirmative answer. From those people who matter to you. Or sometimes who may not also matter to you. OK, the biggest validation today is people who make reels or who post opinions and they keep on checking their comments to see how many people have agreed with me. There is nothing about making reels, making comments or making a keep, you know, putting your point of view across. But for validation only, I'm telling this. People then what they do, they keep checking how many likes I have got, how many uh, subscribers I have got, how many comments uh, I have got, um, uh, uh, you know, like how many, how many people agree with me, how many people have also spoken on the same lines that I have done. So that is validation. You want that whatever I have spoken, other people should agree with me because that gives me some kind of strength. Okay, so that is validation. Now, what is invalidation? Invalidation is whatever you are saying, the person does not, you know, he, 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 he or she does not feel it to be that valuable or that person does not give you his opinion. Let's say I'll tell you an example. Suppose you are somebody who cooks well. OK, now you have tried. You like to try new recipes. You have tried a new recipe and uh, you know you have uh, tried it and you have given that uh, to the other person to try. The person will eat it. But the person will not give you any comment. He'll eat, he'll take the first bite, second, third, fourth, and then you then you pause and ask, Acha bana hai? is it good? Do you like it? And the person just replies in a hmm. Ha. Huh. That is invalidating. Okay. That is invalidating in very subtle forms. And what is invalidating in very, you know, in very, very direct forms. When you say that acha bana hai and the person directly tells you acha nahi bana hai but apan bana liya to kha lenge. Correct. So that is invalidation. When when you want when you want some positives from a person uh, whom you value and sometimes also from people whom you don't value. I'll tell you from people whom you don't value. Ye kab hota hai? This does not happen in a relationship. In a relationship, only this happens from a person whom you value. But when you, let's say from those persons whom you don't value, ye kab hota hai? suppose you are, you just, you are on the stage and you are speaking something randomly out of topic. And once you have spoken, people clap. Some people tell, wow, this is excellent. Wow, we never thought about this. Absolutely great idea. Great initiative. This is this is coming. This validation is coming from those people who don't matter to you because you might not even know them. OK, this does not happen in a relationship. In a relationship, only that person has the ability to hurt you. To whom you have given this power. OK, only that person can betray you whom you have trusted the most correct so in relationship the person is not unknown the person is very much known but you would want a certain kind of response from him a certain kind of comment from him a certain kind of compliment for from him but the person does not give that to you okay so this is known as Ill invalidation this happens a lot you know guess can you guess friends with whom does this happen happen a lot which category or let's say which age group complains about this the most can anybody give me an give me an answer for this which age group complains about invalidation the most Teenager, okay. Someone says teenager, teenager, children, teens, old age people. Friends, think, think. 
elderly, older adults, okay. Okay, adolescents, elderly. Okay, friends, first of all, thank you for your responses because you are processing whatever I'm telling you. But the correct answer to this question is, you might have heard something about midlife crisis, especially happens with ladies um, somewhere around, let's say, once ladies are married and their children, um, you know, they have reached puberty and now they are more into their friends, peers, they're more into studies, husband has a job, uh, the ladies mostly spend time at their homes or they are not into any uh, you know, uh, they're not into any alternative profession. They're mostly homemakers. So they seek a lot of validation, friends, from their children, from their husband, from their relatives, in-laws, everybody. And that is the time when if people don't react to them the way they want them to react or they don't respond to them that way, they feel very, very much aloof, lonely, they feel like they feel they're ignored and neglected. OK, so this age from, let's say, 35 to 40, 42, 45. Validation means a lot. OK, I would answer why teenage and elderly people will not come into the most, uh, uh, you know, the category. Why teenage teenagers would not want validation that much uh, from relations because relationships because they're very fluctuating that time. If one person does not give me a good response, I'll go to a next relationship. If this friend does not talk to me properly, I'll talk to another friend. The midlife, let's say that category, the uh, uh, time period I told, those people cannot change relationships that fast. Why? Because they're already into few people in their lives and they know these people matter to me. Number one, elderly people also will not seek validation because you seek validation when you start doing something new or when you when you are doing things elderly people tend to lose focus to do anything new or to do more things okay they 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 reach the age of wisdom they reach the age of contemplation they reach the age of reflection where where they are not doing many new things but they are reflecting on what they have done all all this time in their life okay so that is why Invalidation, sorry, validation is mostly required by people who are in the midlife. Is this understood, friends? Please write, in, write a yes so that I know this is understood. OK, friends, before going to the next slide. I would want everyone to just write. How is the class going for you all? Yeah, they need attention. They don't need validation. Attention is whatever I'm doing. You be a part of it. If I am not, if I'm telling that I'm not having if I'm if I'm telling I don't like this food, you go and get me a you know you go and get me what kind of food I want to eat. If I like this kind of clothes, you get it for me. This is attention. Validation is I have done something. Please approve it and please react to it the way I I am expecting to get the reaction. Okay. Okay. So okay. thank you, friends, for your. Answer OK, uh, somebody asked a question. Can you repeat the reason for midlife crisis? Yeah, sure I can. So uh, midlife crisis is somewhere where the person has already formed meaningful relationships. OK, because the person has formed meaningful relationship, the person has stabilized it. Now they don't want to move from one relationship to other. Number one, number two. Because now they're spending a lot of time on their own. They still have the energy. They still have the skill. They try new, new things. OK, they try cooking. Somebody may try their hand at writing. Somebody may try their hand at, um, uh, let's say, um, you know, uh, creating art and craft and such kind of thing. And because, you know, their, their children matter, their relatives matter, their um, husband uh, husband matters, wife matters. They would want 
to get validation from them. Correct. But these initiatives will not be taken by teenagers or elder people. That is why midlife, midlife mein jo people hai, they take the maximum initiatives and also they crave for validation. When they don't get it in a relationship and this continues over time. Friends, the saddest part is whatever we have been talking till now, this is not a one day, one month or let's say two month event. You will not believe in some places this continues for years and years. Even the entire relationship from the beginning till the end, till the death of one of the person in a relationship, this continues till the end. And the person keeps feeling this is a very normal relationship I have. But it is, but they're never happy. If it is normal, you should be happy as well. They're not happy, but they term it as normal. So you can understand the, um, the immense um, frustration, sadness the person goes through on a daily basis. Okay. So, yeah. Is this clear, friends? Who asked about the... Uh, you had asked what? Attention. Okay. Reason for midlife crisis. Yes. Yeah, I just explained invalidation causes harm. Yeah, invalidation causes harm. That's what I'm saying. Invalidation causes harm because when you're always expecting something, when you're always thinking that the other person uh, is not giving me any input, it's not giving me any feedback. So you're always waiting. Okay, you're always waiting. And therefore, your focus is always divided. Because your focus is always divided, you always remain unhappy. And that spills over to the other areas of your life. You would not want to... Have you ever, have you ever faced this? You're waiting for a message from somebody. Okay, until that message comes, you're not able to focus entirely on other aspects, other works. So that is what exactly is invalidation. Correct. Okay, friends. Now we'll go to the next slide. Now next is emotionally unavailable partner. I think uh, there's nothing to explain here. Uh, emotionally unavailable means the person will be there with you, will uh, physically participate in every activity, everything. But when you have to talk or share something, uh, some moments or some feelings with that person, that person is always, always unavailable. So let's say you have a birthday party. Uh, I'm giving you a very, very crude example. You have a birthday party at your house and let's say the relatives have come over and the birthday party goes very well. The person, there is a person A, there's a person B. So person A also participates in it. But then what happens? A relative of person A tell something to person B, which was very hurtful. Or let's say the person B was hurt by it. After the party is over, person B wants to talk about it to person A. That, you know, this is the party went well, but this relative told me these, these kind of things. And, you know, this is how I felt. Now, what the person A says, I said, okay, now the party is over. Now you sleep. Why talk about all of this? It's over. Why talk about it? The time is gone. If there's anything else we can talk about, tell me. So this is being emotionally unavailable. When somebody wants to discuss something with you, you just shut them up completely. You don't want to reach someone on an emotional level. Why this happens? Because the person is not ready or the person does not want to venture into something that is unknown. Because he knows or she knows if I'm getting into this discussion, I don't know, there would be so many other aspects also that I have to get involved in. So better not be there, not be there in this conversation at all. So that is being emotionally unavailable. Okay. Now next, uh, next part, next, uh, I would say aspect of many relationships, uh, many people not being able to form deep relationships these days is because of something known as situationship. Very, very modern term, friends. I'm sure many of you might um, know about it already. Okay, what is situationship? Situationship is when two people uh, get into a romantic relationship, but they don't have any boundaries. They don't have any commitment. Uh, they don't have any clear sharing, shared goals for the future, but they are they're bound to each other 
by uh, emotional intimacy, spending time together. Uh, they have a, you can say, physical and sexual component in it. Uh, they, they are just like a couple, you can say. They are just like a couple in any normal relationship, but they don't have a name for that relationship, okay? They don't have any set boundaries. They can get out of that relationship anytime, any moment. They can be in that relationship and also in relationship with many others at the same time, okay? So that is known as a situationship. Why is it called situationship? Because the situation is such that I am in need of somebody right now and I am available, you are available. So let's uh, come together because you whatever you are looking for i am also looking for the same things but i am not in a position to give commitment to you you are not in a position to give commitment to me so let's just be in a relationship and um, you know just move till we can and agaka will see whenever whenever there will be uh, a, a requirement to you know think about it we'll think let's just live for today so that is known as situation shift friends um I'll say uh, very modern phenomena, but uh, what exactly happens? Why situationship, um, you would say, is good or bad? See, situationship is a very short term, um, you can say short term um, affiliation, okay? Short term affiliation between two people. Why this is harming people is because you really do not know where your boundaries are. You really do not know at what time and how much can I interfere in a person's life. You really do not know whether the person I am investing so much on emotionally, physically, resource-wise, time-wise, tomorrow whether the person is going to be mine or not. So you are always in a dilemma, okay? You are always in a confusion. And all of this while I have explained you one thing, that the real problem in relationship starts when you are confused. The best and the most healthy relationship is where everything is clear. Okay. Now, situationship is where the person is always confused. Uh, today, I want to, let's say, uh, people will say, that, okay, let's buy this. Okay. But they are not very sure whether they should buy it jointly or not because they don't know tomorrow what will happen. Uh, let's say they would want to sit and make a plan but they don't know whether they should invest so much in that trip or vacation or not because they don't know whether this is going to last or not so that is situationship where everything where the bonding between them is mostly of a romantic nature okay and as you know uh, romantic things it, it, there are again three components of love i have not added it here but what is three components of love that is intimacy there is, there has to be intimacy, there has to be commitment, okay, and there has to be shared efforts. So now you see there is only intimacy here. Other two, commitment bilkul nahi hai, shared efforts could be there, could not be there. Now, do you think this physical intimacy will last long? It may not last long. It will last long only when two people feel the same way about each other. Tomorrow, if one of them also does not feel the same about the other person, it will break off. Correct. So that is why situationship and relationship, uh, there is a difference. And here the person or the or you know, I'll say both both of them, they remain highly confused as to what the future of this relationship is and what is the next step. You know, what is the next step? What is the next level to this relationship? Okay. So this is relationship versus situationship. Now let's just do a worksheet now. Is this understood? Is this understood for everybody? Friends, just um, tell me. Yeah, high level of uncertainty, correct. Friends, please give me your comments. Is this understood for everybody? We'll do a worksheet now. Yes. Live-in relationship. Yeah, but live-in relationship is still little stable. Situationship is very volatile. Live-in relationship, mein, uh, you are still informing people that you are in a relationship with them. You know, you, you, you disclose about your partner. Situationship, mein, 
you never say that this person is my partner. You just say I'm with him. But simultaneously, you're dating other people as well. And it is acceptable by both the parties. Correct. Yeah, the worksheet will be shared in the group. Um, don't worry about it. I'll share it. Now, let me just give you a quick glance. First of all, you need to set boundaries. Why, why did we come to boundaries? Because of the all the confusion and all the uncertainty that we saw in these seven to eight slides. Okay, so first we need to set boundaries. So what are boundaries? Boundaries is you being assertive with the people in your life. Uh, okay, so you can just read it. This is not important. What is important is this. Okay. Now there are certain situations. Okay, there are certain situations to you. Now, how would your response be? What kind of boundaries would you set? So I'm if it's not if it's not visible to everybody, I'm just uh, reading it out and you can just uh, write the answer. You will write the answer for yourself, friends. You don't need to share it anywhere. Situation is you have invited a friend over for the evening, but now it's getting late. You would like to get ready for bed, but your friend seems unaware of how late it is. So what would be your response? I'll tell in Hindi. Aapne kisi ko bulaya hai shaam mein, let's say dinner ke liye. Lekin jo friend hai aapke, wo, you know, uh, dinner ke baad bhi wo bahut deir tak baithe hai. And abhi aapko sone jana hai because aap generally 10 baje so jate hai. Already 9.45, 9.50 ho gaya. Aapke friend ja bhi ne rahe hai ya phir wo ye bhi ne bol rahe hai ki mein abhi jana chahunga ya chahungi. Lekin aap, aap, Generally, usi time pe hi sote hai. So, what can you do? Aapka response kya hoga for your friend? How would you tell him or her that you need to go to bed and he can make a move now? Okay. So, just take like 20, 30 seconds. Think of the response. Even if you are not writing, think of the response. How you would set a boundary. Yeah, all the worksheets will be shared in the group, friends. Don't worry about it. I think, Vijay, you know the answer very well. If one person is in situationship and the other person is in relationship, then definitely both have different approaches towards it. They should not be together then. They have to agree whether to both of them to be in situationship or both of them to be in relationship. Otherwise, this will not continue. This might just go on for a month or two or maybe lesser than that. Okay, friends. Now, the second um, question for you is, a good friend asks you out on a date. You are not interested in being more than friends. You would like to let them you would like to let them down clearly but gently. Matlab, somebody is asking you for a date but aapke dimaag mein ye hai that I only want to be friends with this person. To aap unko mana karna chahenge. To aap kis tarha se mana karenge? Aapka response kya hoga? Aapne apne liye jo boundary set kiya hai, us hesaap se what would be your response? Okay? So think about it friends. Even if you are not writing, think about it. Because this will give you a very clear picture of how assertive you should be and what your boundaries should be or what boundaries you have created for yourself. Okay, now let's go to a work related um, situation. You missed several days of work due to a medical condition. Okay, when you get back, a co-worker asks you what happened. Means a co-worker asked you that why were you absent? What was the reason? And you feel that this information is too personal and you do not want to share it. So what should be your response to your co-worker? What, what would you tell him? Think about it. We'll take one more question, friends, then you can do this yourself when uh, this will be shared in the group. 
Now, next one is a very personal and this might happen with a lot of people. This, this is more, more of a family, family situation. Your brother asks if you can watch his two young children on Saturday morning. You already have plans. So what would be your response? Which means, um, you already have some plans on Saturday to go somewhere or you know, if you want to do something. And suddenly, your brother calls you and says, my two children, keep your attention to them because I mean, I have some work. And you don't want to do it. So what would be your response you know, for your brother, आप अपने भाई को क्या बोलना चाहेंगे? Correct. So think about it. What boundary? So you saw you have one boundary in your family. You have one boundary for your workplace. You have one boundary with your friends. You have one boundary with your loved ones. Okay. Okay, friends, can we move ahead? Yeah, there are some chats. One moment, please. Yes, Jay, that is correct. Okay, Swati has given a very good answer. Okay. DF, I don't know if I'm pronouncing your name right now. Uh, name correct. That's also right. Good answer. Very good. Very good. Very good answers. Okay. Do you think, friends, we should have a session on assertive communication as well? Okay. Okay. Now, friends, this is one worksheet we all must do, even if take even if it takes a little longer, because we really want to work on the clarity. You have seen everywhere it is confusion. And the first thing that we would want to work is upon the clarity. So let's do this worksheet. Uh, so basically, how clarity in a relationship looks like, it's uh, how would it be? If you want a person to be available, the person is either available or tells you why he cannot be available. Correct. Let's say the person says, I, I cannot be, I am not able to talk to you at this time because I'm in a meeting. But after 45 minutes to one hour, I'll be free. I'll call you and let's talk about this. Do you think it is a good option? Than staying emotionally unavailable. Yes? Yes. Okay. Now... What would, uh, let's take another example of clarity. Uh, suppose person B wants to talk about a mistake that person B has done. Okay. And I'm sorry I talked to you that way. And I'm sorry I uttered those words. But I really want to apologize. And um, please just forgive me if you can. I really did a mistake and, and I'm repenting for it. Now, what, what, what is a good option? Tell me. The person A says, say, I don't want to talk about it. I'm not ready to forgive you. And I don't, I really don't know how much time I'll take to come out of this. It's better we don't talk about it at all. Just think this never happened. This is one. Or the person A says, okay, I understand that you have told this out of frustration or anger. And it has hurt me also. But I don't think I can get over it this soon. Can you just give me some time? Um, I'll think over it and maybe I would also want to put my perspective across. Can we just take a time, take one or two days off this topic and again talk about it after two to three days? Tell me, friends, which one is good? 
the um, option one of what A was saying or option B? Second one, yes, second one, yes. So, fine. So, you understand what clarity is, correct? Now, let's uh, do this. Yeah. Yeah, just do this, friends. Let, let us do this. Am I a good partner um, worksheet? I don't know if it's visible or not. First, let's do couple strengths, then we'll do a Maya good part. Okay. Okay. This is very easy. You just have to think of two to three strengths of your partner. Okay. And of every strength that you mention. You have to choose a memory where you feel your partner has displayed this strength. Let's say one of the strength of your partner is that he's very understanding. Let's say. So you think about a moment or let's say an event in your life or in your relationship where you think that he was extremely understanding and he displayed it so well that you felt blessed to have him or her in your life. Okay, so just, we'll not do much. We'll just take three strengths. So think about three strengths of your partner and write about the memory of that event where he displayed this strength. Okay, he or she displayed this strength. So friends, I'll give you two minutes for this. Should not take much. Uh, please write it. Uh, five, it is uh, five, seven now. Five, ten, we'll resume. Okay. There's nothing to be visible in this. I'll share it. I'm just asking you that you need to find out three strengths of your partner and recall a memory or an event in your relationship or in your life where your partner has shown that quality. Let's say being punctual. So it might be parent teachers meeting of your child and he has reached on time that day. Despite being really very busy in office, Let's say he is very honest somewhere. You didn't expect him to be honest, but he came out to be very honest, very caring, understanding, truthful. Something like this, okay. Yes, I'll share it in the group. Don't worry about it. I'll share it in the group. One minute more, friends. Okay, that's very good.
Okay, friends, I think you might have completed. If not, complete it later, no problems. Just to give you a feel of what you should be getting in this worksheet. Okay, now comes the million dollar question. <laughs> when to seek relationship counseling? Okay, so basically, uh, as you might remember, in my last session, I had mentioned it to you that an average couple takes about six years, uh, you know, before thinking about going into counseling. So when is the right time to seek counseling? So relationship counseling should begin the moment you feel there are problems that are affecting your daily life, okay? Your daily functioning, your productivity, your focus, your mood, your health and your mental health, okay? So if all those six, seven parameters that I told, when the problems in your relationship pervade into these aspects and they start troubling you. That is the best time to seek relationship counseling. Okay. So generally, what are the signs, you know, that you might see? Number one, you have trouble express, expressing your feelings to one another. You have disagreements that cannot be solved despite making efforts. You are withdrawn. You criticize or you, you know, um, there's there's a lot of contempt there's a lot of um, unhappiness okay in your interactions um you always feel very stressed you both cannot arrive at a decision together uh, there is addiction there is abuse there is infidelity and the the stress from this is mounting and it is affecting your relationships or basically you just want a stronger relationship that is why you go into relationship counseling okay so i think this is clear nothing much to explain here now what are the types of relationship counseling there is premarital counseling which means uh two people who are about to get married or before their marriage they take counseling because they want their communication to improve they want that they before embarking on a journey of uh, uh let's say of being a couple or of being a married couple they want to even out many things that might uh, affect their relationships in the long run okay so they want uh, you know uh, they want to be prepared for a long term commitment they want to develop healthy communication skills they want um, strong healthy relationship before marriage um, also if there could be some uh, you know problems that could come up tomorrow they want to uh, you know they, they want to work on it right now so um, what what could be some issues that can uh, come up in premarital counseling? Uh, issues regarding communication, family relationship, finances, parenting choices means whether to have children, not to have children. How how many children you know uh, you want to have, or let's say um, you know roles and responsibilities, their values, their belief system uh, regarding the sexual intimacy, regarding affection. All of this can be dealt in premarital counseling. Then um, there could be online relationship counseling. So why online relationship counseling? Let's say uh, you are in a uh, long distance relationship. Two people are not in the same city. So how they can go for counseling? So they can go for online counseling. Like we are doing a course now. All of you have joined from um, various states, various locations. So how we are coming together through online only. So like that online counseling they can do. Or when they are frequently traveling for work, they might be in the same city, but the timing is not matching. So that time online relationship counseling will work. Or let's say they are not um, very much comfortable with traditional therapy. Why? Because traditional therapy could be very anxiety provoking. Looking at somebody and answering your very deep and personal emotions could intimidate you, right? So that is why online relationship counseling looks up like a better option. So how this can be done? This can be done through online chat, video session, phone calls. Okay, uh, where and what generally is done here? So both partners, they'll work to create goals which may include addressing problems related to communication, arguments, infidelity, etc. Okay, mm, now let's say one of the partner does not want to come for a therapy. What can you do? Can you force? 
can you force then if one of the partner does not want to come for therapy Yes, correct. We cannot force somebody to come for therapy, number one. And the second thing that I'm going to tell you is the most life-changing thing you will ever hear if you are a therapist, that is, you can only counsel a person who thinks that a problem actually exists. Matlab, what it means is, people will come and tell you that my son does not study well. My son cannot make friends. My daughter does not get along well with others. You please counsel him or her. As a therapist, you cannot counsel them until and unless the person in question does not feel that it is a problem for him or her. You got my point. Like let's say my daughter does not get along well with others. Might be a problem for me as a mother. But my daughter feels it's a very natural way of life for her. It is not affecting her normal life. It is not affecting her productivity. It is not affecting her focus. She does not consider it as a problem at all. Then on what grounds will you counsel? Did everybody get this point? This is very important point. Just write yes or no. Did you get this or not? Yes, Vijay Kumar, right? So that is why if one of the partner refuses therapy, it could be for two reasons. Number one, he first of all does not see it as a problem. When will this happen? If one of the person is narcissistic, will he see it as a problem, friends? Afreen, I'll come to that question. Yes. So if the person does not see it as a problem itself, you cannot counsel. He'll also not come from for, come for counseling. Second, what could be the reason? Now the second reason is even more dangerous. The person enjoys this power game. He enjoys criticizing, humiliating and putting down his or her partner because that way he feels he has control over the relationship. He does not want to go to the counselor because he thinks or she thinks, if I go in my deepest of conversations, I'll blurt this out. So better I don't go. Better how it is continuing, let it continue. Does it happen, friends? Do you think this happens? Just tell me yes or no. Yes, I said, I said that. Suppose one reason why partner A will not go for counseling is because he does not think this to be a problem at all. He thinks that our, our relationship is healthy and everything is going well. We don't need counseling. Second reason why he will not go is because or she will not go because he enjoys doing this. He enjoys being emotionally unavailable. He enjoys invalidation. He enjoys humiliating his partner or her partner. And he thinks this is how he controls the relationship. He has the power in the relationship. Because I am doing this, I am being happy. And I have the power to make the other person unhappy. I have the power to make the other person happy. If my wife prepares something for me and is waiting for my reaction or for my comment that means i have the power if i don't give the comment i make her unhappy if i give the comment i make her happy so i'm enjoying this power game why should i go because if i go and in counseling session this deepest of my uh, you know this this intention of mine is disclosed in the deepest of the conversation then i'll lose the power tomorrow so better i don't go for counseling at all got it Yeah, friends, there are many questions. Just go, give me one minute. Afreen had asked, what if the counselor sees that both of them are incompatible? Afreen, the first thing is that counselor here cannot take a call. 
both the partners have to understand whether they're compatible or not compatible or whether they want to take the plunge or not. If during the entire conversation or counseling session, they find out that no, we are not compatible and this will not work out, the counselor should and will leave it on to them to decide. The counselor will never decide. You as a counselor or a therapist should never decide what the counselee should do. Okay. I'm answering the next questions. Okay, if one partner refuses therapy and other seeks counseling, will it help? Yes, it will help. It will help till the time the person who has taken the counseling can cope up with this person. Let's say the person, let's say, uh, see here for your understanding, we are thinking uh, there are two persons, A and B. Let's say person A is the one who's doing the wrong person B is the one who's taking in all the wrong. Okay, just for excess, you know, simplification purpose, I've put it this way. If A does not go for therapy, B goes, B has had realization. Now B has two things to do. One, to deal with the person in the best way possible from the counseling that uh, he or she has taken or to detach from the person and leave the person. Now, again, that is the prerogative of B. The counselor cannot force that, yeah, you must leave this person. The counselor cannot tell this. If any of you being counselors are directing the client to do this, it is wrong. Sorry to break it to you, but it is wrong. Okay. So if one person takes counseling, will it help? It will help for better coping mechanism and mental health of the person who has sought the counseling. But will this ensure or guarantee successful continuation or uh, the relationship to be healthy cannot say. Why cannot say? Because it is a two-way process. It might become good uh, for a certain period, but totally depends on the intensity of coping of person B who has taken the therapy. Okay. Is this clear? Okay. VP has asked how to deal with such person. I'm, I'm coming to it. I'm coming. Sangeeta has asked the world will be better for us. Huh. Can't the person be convinced? The person can be convinced. Why not? Person can be convinced. But again, the first thing is the person needs to understand it is a problem. If the person understands it's a, uh, if the person does not think it to be a problem, you cannot convince. If the person thinks it's a problem, but I'm not going for this, 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 this reason, then those reasons can be disputed and the person can be convinced. If a person has fear of commitment, will it come under narcissistic? Um, that is that is one aspect of being narcissistic because when you are giving a commitment, you are also being responsible for the other person. That is an aspect, but it does not necessarily mean uh, that the both have to go together. Sometimes the person gives commitment because he feels that to whom I'm giving commitment, that person will always, you know, um glorify me so it is better to stay with that person so this could be an aspect but they both will go together always not mandatory okay one a lot of questions friends just one minute i'll answer everything and then we'll move ahead Huh. If both the partners are confused whether to go for counseling or not the uh, question is asked by Priyanka if both the partners are still confused whether to go with their relationship or not, despite the effort from the counselor part, what should the counselor do? Okay, Priyanka, first of all, counselor has nothing to do. Counsel what is counselor doing? Counselor is not a musician. Counselor is not a, um, you know, he he is not, he does not have a magic wand. Ki ab dono ne, you both came to me, so I'll solve everything. Counselors only and only motive is to clarify the paths before you. You are having, you know what is correct. When you are going to the counselor, even you deep, deep in your heart know what is correct for me. 
but you are not having the courage to accept it or maybe you are not able to differentiate the pros and cons of it the counselor will only clarify for it for you the counselor will not tell you are yaar why you people are fighting so much you both na you both just separate Okay, Shrija ji. Uh, sorry, I'm not getting this question. Shrija, what if the person decides to end the relation just because his partners, parents are assured or confirmed about the relationship to marriage? Sir, I'm not able to understand this question. Could you frame it in a frame it in other way? Ha, ah, so Deep F has uh, given the correct answer here. Yes. acha you okay i got it i got it shrija i'm sorry i didn't get it in the first place you are saying that the person wants to end the relationship because the because partners parents are not agreeing to their marriage or something like that hai na to theek hai this is not counseling this is a choice understand the difference counseling is when there are various options before you you are facing some problem in your life and you want to choose one option basing on the advantage disadvantage therefore you go to a trained person who can who can just clarify things before you but when you want to stay in a relationship because there is a commitment to marriage or there is no commitment that is purely a choice purely a choice there is no counseling for it needed you have to weigh your pros and cons okay see i am facing i'll tell you i'll give you a very simpler example for this i want to join school or not i don't have to go to a counselor i have joined the school and i'm facing a lot of issues i'm being bullied i'm not able to understand my classes the teachers don't like me i'm not able to follow what's going on whether i should continue in that school or not there you need counseling i should join school or not there you don't need counseling is it understood i want to get married or not there you don't need counseling i got married and i'm facing these issues i need counseling is this understood shrija is this understood yes okay friends is it going uh, easy for you or how is it going till now tell me going good right okay i just hope i'm not too fast okay so here how would you do the counseling so i think all of you know about it i'm just going to skim through it let's uh, just because if it's to refresh your memory so there are four to five stages of counseling basically five in some books you will find four some books you will also find seven first is relationship building or the rapo building when the client comes to you and you build a rapo so that the client trusts you enough to tell his or her deepest secrets then there is assessment so we do an assessment like what is your mood now how are you feeling now what is your anxiety level and all of that then there's a goal setting means what you have come to me with this problem and what clarity do you want suppose the person says i have come to you because i am really suffering a lot in my relationships and you know my partner does not treat me well he humiliates me he criticizes me um he makes me feel small before others okay fine so what do you expect from this counseling sessions what do you want uh, this counseling session should give you what are your goals so my goals is that my partner should not um, humiliate me okay and 
and uh, I should not feel small. Okay, and and um, I think um, I should feel confident. Okay. Now, friends, <laughs> I told you three goals. My partner should not humiliate me. I should feel confident. And um, second one I forgot. I think uh, I told uh, my partner should not humiliate me. I Let's say two only. Uh, my uh, partner should not humiliate me and I should feel confident. That is our goal setting. These are the two goals, let's say, that the person has told. Friends, with what goal can we work? Can you tell me? Kis goal pe hum kaam kar sakte hai? Hamare client ne humko do goals bataye. Ek bataya that my partner should not humiliate me. Aur dusra goal humko bataya that I should feel confident. So in dono mein se on which goal can we start working? Yes. Very good. Very good. We cannot work on the first goal. Why? Because that is not in our control. What the other person will do to us, it's not in our control. But we want to feel confident, we can do it. Now, what to do about the first goal? Should we tell our client, Ki are you go, we cannot help you. Because we can do nothing about this humiliation. Should we tell like this? No. What we will do? We'll teach them techniques and methods. About what? About how not to worry about the humiliation, number one. How to turn around the humiliation in your favor. Let's say if your partner humiliates you, try and find out on what on what what reasons is he humiliating you? Is he if he is humiliating you, is it really humiliation? Or because you are in a bad mood due to your expectations or due to due to some reasons that you are treating it as a humiliation. So we can work about, you know, you can work around with that, but we cannot commit to uh, our client that, okay, we'll do something that your partner does not humiliate. Please never make such kind of commitments. But yes, you want to feel confident, we can definitely work on that and we should work on that first. Why? Because that is in our control. Is this point understood by everyone, friends? Okay, okay. There are some questions, friends. I'll just take up questions. Now, Priyanka has asked, suppose one partner wants divorce, but the other person wants to be in the relationship. So, for that reason, the person has brought her partner to counseling. That means who has brought to counseling? The person who does not want divorce has brought the other person to counseling, right? Yeh to? Huh? Yeh na? Okay. Yeah. So what can be done? What can be done? You think what can be done? Taking divorce or not taking divorce again is a choice. What will happen when they come to the counseling session? They both will put their perspectives. Why one person wants divorce? Why the other person does not want divorce? Now, what the counselor can do or will do here, the counselor will give chance to both. Uh, the counselor can talk to each one of them individually or can after that can talk to both of them at the same time. Um, you know, all three of them can have a conversation and then they can first work upon their expectations and communications. Why the person wants to take a divorce? See, if it is about cheating, infidelity, Majority of the relationships don't last. If it is about misunderstanding, if it is about expectations being too unrealistic, expectations being too large, then these miscommunications, misunderstanding can be cleared over a series of sessions. Okay. Now, again, a lot of techniques are used for that. If we cover those techniques here, then it will be too long. Maybe we can have a separate class for that. But then both of them can sit weighs the pros and cons, weigh the pros and cons of their relationship and of the problems they are facing. If we take a divorce today, what is our life path going to be? If we do not take how we can work on our relationship, this is not a one day process or one session process. It will go up to eight to 10 sessions. Once this goes on at the end of the session, 
then they can decide whether both of them want to stay or both of them do not want to stay. Let's say, reacting to your answer question, one of the, uh, even after all of this, one person does not want to stay. Then, as per legal provisions of uh, of our country, if even if one person does not want to stay, then the marriage can be dissolved. Then they will go to legal. Then they will go to the legal procedures. Okay, is this understood? Priyanka, is this understood? Yeah. Okay. Uh, friends, after the goal setting, then there is intervention. So what is intervention? Intervention is where you have thought of what therapy I will give, what worksheets I'll give, what activities I'll give, uh, what are the conversations that I will engage the couple in. See, here we are basically talking about couples only. So every example of mine will be linked to couple. And last may it is termination and follow up. So last may when you think after eight to ten sessions that the couple now has understood the gravity of the relationship. Now they have understood um, why they had come for and, you know, their goals now have been met whatever they were thinking they would um, get or you know reap from this uh, counseling uh, uh, session or this entire counsel uh, you know stream of counseling sessions that has come uh, that is they have received that then we can terminate terminate means we can tell both of them that okay whatever you wanted to get from this uh, entire counsel series of counseling sessions you have received that so you need not come uh, for further sessions and then you can follow up so what is follow up? follow up is once you have told them this then you can ask them to come let's say once every month or once every two months or you can ask them to be in touch with you that whenever you are still facing any issues or you think there is something that is again bothering you both so you can again get in touch and we can decide whether to carry on um, with other sessions or not okay so this is a termination and follow-up i hope this is understood uh, by everyone friends uh, taking this more elaborate would actually elongate the class a uh, lot Okay, so now we come to the most interesting part. That is, uh, in relationship counseling, there's a person called John Gottman who worked a lot on relationship counseling. And he has come out with various activities and various um, checklists and other things. And he claims that this has improved people's relationship over the years. Okay, so what he does is he makes the couple sit and he addresses areas of conflict, whatever areas of conflict are there. And he asks them to, you know, um, talk about uh, the problems. Then he equips them with problem uh, solving skills. And then he sees that their level of intimacy, friendship, etc. has improved. Okay, so we'll do a worksheet here. If we have time, we'll do it. Otherwise, you do it when uh, I'll, I'll share it in the group. This is known as Am I a Good Partner? Okay, I don't know how to zoom it here. I don't know if it is visible, but I'll just read out few questions to you and then uh, I'll share it in the group. You can just go through it. Okay, so first is uh, what do you do? Are you a good partner? So there are some questions like, uh, do I forget to thank my partner when they are doing something nice for me? Or let's say, do I ignore my partner's phone calls? Do I make fun of my partner's choices? Okay, so these are a few of the questions. Let's not uh, do this uh, quiz right now because it will take time and we have other important things to do as well. I'll share this in the group, so don't worry. You can do it at peace, okay? But the entire purpose of it is after all of this talk, I just wanted to uh, make uh, a realization to you that whether this happens with you or you do it with the other person. So uh, if you are a good partner, then this you would not be somebody who would be doing it to others. OK, so you are a good partner. So that is why this entire uh, worksheet was there. But you could do it. You can do it at your, you know, you can do it at ease. Not right. Now. OK, now. Now, Gottman had given a few things that we can again see and check. Yes, I'll put it in the group. Don't worry, I'll put it in the group. Yeah. So there are five type of couples as per Gottman. So first one is conflict avoiding couples. So who are conflict avoiding couples? They are the most happy couples. They never get into a conflict. Okay. They are 
always happy. They always want to address the conflict and solve it. Then there are volatile couples who are volatile couples. They are very emotional and they would want to solve every problem and then they're never disrespectful. Okay. What are validating couples? Validating couples are they are supportive and empathetic. Even when they have conflicts, they solve it in a very mild manner. But the last two couples are the ones who really need counseling. One is hostile couples. So hostile couples are the ones who deal with each other with a lot of criticism and with a lot of, uh, you know, um, contempt, a lot of humiliation. OK, and hostile detached are the ones. Who are not only humiliating and, you know, uh, dealing each, uh, with each other with contempt, but they're very emotionally detached as well. They are in a relationship because somewhere they feel that the society demands it. They do not have any physical or emotional intimacy between them. You would find couples around you who are in the relationship just because the sake of their children, just because uh, of their sake or but just because for their parents, you know, my our parents cannot react to our separation. So we have so we have to be together. So the last couple is this hostile detached. There is nothing that is keeping the marriage marriage together. It they just want to keep it together because it looks good in the eyes of the society. That's all. But they are not deriving any happiness, any satisfaction from the marriage. OK, um, now next we come to love maps. Now love maps are very, very important. Um, I would suggest each one of you to invest your energy uh, into this concept okay, of love maps. It can be for any person in your life whom you think. Uh, holds a meaning in your life. So what is love maps? Love map is knowing the preferences of your partner. OK, so what the person likes to eat, what the person does not like, where the person wants to go, what kind of clothing the person prefers, uh, what kind of um, conversations, what kind of TV shows, um, you know, uh, who are his friends or who are uh, those people that he is constantly in touch with and um, what are his good memories, bad memories, everything about a person. If we keep a track of love maps, why, why is it important, friends? Why love map is important? Now, you might just uh, ask a question that, ma'am, why should we keep a track of all this? Is, 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 is my partner a baby that I have to keep track of all this? No, the answer is if you are aware of a person's love map, then the chances of conflict is very less. How? Let me just get into uh, something called uh, something related to eating habit. You know that your partner does not like this particular kind of food. So when you are choosing a place to dine or when you're choosing a restaurant, you are actually avoiding that kind of food. You're not bringing it to the discussion. So you are choosing something which is liked by both of you. Let's say both of you like Bengali food. I'm giving an example. And you know he does not like, let's say, a, uh, a food of uh, one uh, one area. Let's say, let's say just an example. Let's say the person does not like food from North India, and you do not like the food from South India. That's an example. So you both, but you both, but you both know that you enjoy Bengali food. So if this love map is clear of in your mind for your partner, so there would never be a discussion on North Indian food or South Indian food. You would definitely always hit on the right note and you would uh, select something that is shared upon by both of you. So this what happens you even if you are somewhere in the hostile couple, let's say in the hostile couple group, you have much chances to move into the conflicting avoiding couples. That is the first group. OK, so that is why knowing the love map is very much important because that helps you avoid the conflicts that would possibly arise. Is this clear, friends? OK, this is uh, one exercise of fondness and admiration. Uh, again, you can do this. Um, this is nothing. It is just like um, 
you think about any good memory or you think about any physical attribute about your partner or any characteristic of your partner that makes you proud or one thing that you both have in common or one time when your partner was very supportive. So Gottman says that you regularly have to do these exercises. OK, uh, that means whenever you are feeling that, no, my partner does not give me attention. My partner does not love me more, uh, love me as much as he used to do before. So what you can do is you can think about all these memories, all these things, and definitely you will understand that um, the person might not have changed. It's his situations. It's his present time that has led him to behave in a particular way. So these are some of the um, exercises that uh, Gottman has suggested. When you get the, uh, when I, I'll also share this so that you can do it. Okay. Okay. Now Gottman's repair checklist. Here we have to do nothing. He just says that uh, when you are hurt by your partner, then there is a crack somewhere in the relationship so you can actually um, you can actually repair them so how you can repair them you can talk about your feelings uh, clearly you can say sorry you can apologize when it's the right time uh, to talk you can go, uh, go to your partner and apologize you can agree to your partner okay every time it does not have to end in disagreement you can you can take a step your partner can take a step and you both can agree upon uh, uh, certain things then you need to calm down sometimes to while you are putting your point across you get very angry okay you get very aggressive that's not the that's not the way to do it you need to calm down and you need to put your point stop action sometimes you just need to let go okay very very easy words let go but very tough to do sometimes just don't do anything sometimes just be as you are in the present and things around you will improve i think you might have heard a very common story uh, of lord buddha once what happened he asked one of his disciples uh, to go and get water from a pond so when the disciple uh, went to get the water from the pond, already some horses had crossed that pond. So the water was very muddy. Now the disciple sat there with the glass, but didn't get the water, saying that I cannot take muddy water for my Lord. So after a while, when Buddha waited for water and he didn't get it, he came to the pond and he saw his disciple sit there in, you know, near the pond, uh, not knowing what to do because he cannot take muddy water. Probably, you know, he'll get scolded or something. So when he saw Buddha, he was very embarrassed, saying that, sorry, you had asked me to bring water, but I could not. Then Buddha said, the water is, our mind is just like this water. A lot of thoughts, a lot of memories, a lot of our experiences run around it. But when we sit still, things begin to settle and things become clear. You waited here not knowing what to do but you didn't know that during this time the water is settling down and it will become clear in some time and you can get the water for me correct so similarly sometimes we need to stop acting or we need to not take any action and things around us will get better okay and last one is appreciation very much important even if it's for very less things Appreciate friends, learn to appreciate. Once you appreciate things, you see beauty in even the smaller and finer things. OK, so these were Gottman's repair checklist. Uh, this is very much used in therapy. If ever we have a very elaborate class on relationship counseling therapy techniques, then maybe, you know, we can talk about them in detail. Appreciate is if a part if your partner does something for you, which you think was really nice. So tell it to him or her. You know, express it. Don't keep it to yourself. Don't think that it's a very routine thing. And, you know, even if he or she has done it, it's quite OK. No, just tell it on face. And I'm so thankful that you did this for me. I really appreciate this from the bottom of my heart. OK, the next is the jar of connection. Uh, jar of connection is you will get it everywhere. I've just put it for a reference. So what they do is they have right. They have a jar of connection. May You have small, small activities. OK, like. Uh, uh, start a conversation, go for a walk, go for a dinner, go for dinner uh, or let's say go for a trip and then you put it in a jar and you keep it every one day or two days or every week. Pick out one chit from there. Whatever is written, do that together. That is known as the jar of connection. OK. Is this understood, friend? Very easy.
yeah i'll just take the questions friend uh, love map is partners liking and dislike yes yes it, it's correct mostly about liking appreciating the or appreciating or remembering the likes and ignoring the dislikes not picking them up in the conversations okay a uh, jar of connection is you have small small activities you make them um, you make chits out of them put it in a jar and every 3 days 4 days or whenever you both have decided pick that active pick one chit from that jar there would be an activity mentioned do that together let's say it's like it's uh, there's an activity like donate clothes in charity let's say that activity you have picked up then you gather your clothes and his clothes let's say and then both of you donate it at the chat so that is one event that you did together so this you know strengthens your bond okay i hope this is understood is this understood friends please write in the comments now again gottman uh, suggest seven principles of successful relationships so all that we read he just uh, you know this this just just a organized version of it Yes, I'll give you the jar of connection. Don't worry. Now, first is enhance your love maps. Means we, you know, take more efforts in knowing uh, the love maps uh, uh, of your partner. Then there should be fondness and admiration. There should be um, more of um, you know uh, shared decision making. You should solve your solvable problems. You should be with your partner in difficult times. If there is any gridlock or deadlock, you both should sit together and discuss over it, and uh, you know uh, try to solve it and create shared meaning. What does that mean? Whatever you are doing, try to see that uh, you select activities which you can do together. So that is create shared meaning. And then um, Gottman said, suppose you have, suppose your partner is criticizing you or humiliating you. So there are five different ways to deal with. Number one, affection. That is, if in, even if he's criticizing you, try and understand the reason for his bitterness. Okay. Second is interest. That is, uh, find a common or shared interest between both of you. Third, if you really think you are wrong, or if you really think you have done something wrong, apologize. Fourth, empathy. Try and think. Under what circumstances is this coming from him? And fifth, appreciation. Once you have understood where this is coming from, once you have rectified, then there should be an appreciation. Appreciation from your partner, appreciation from your side as well. So this is known as five to one ratio. Let's say there is one part criticism, but there are five different ways to deal with it. Okay. So this is what means five to one ratio. Now, um. Last May, how to make relationship therapy effective? Understand these were all of you know all of these were the issues for which you went to the therapist and you took uh, counseling. Now, how can you make it more effective? Number one, uh, the therapist or the counselor has to be skilled and experienced, and couple also has to be willing to go to the therapist. When you are with the therapist, be honest. Okay, whatever it is, be honest and tell them. The story honestly, and also be prepared for some discomfort because they might ask you very personal details, which you also have to tell so that they can um, clarify parts before you in a better way. Then listen to your partner. Many a times, what happens? Both the partners start fighting in front of the counselor itself. They both start fighting, sometimes even physically hitting each other, and the counseling sessions uh, end abruptly. They don't come back, and this never gets solved. So don't be that uh, you know restrictive, or don't be that uh, you know repulsive. Rather, please listen to your partner and just give him or her a chance to speak. Uh, uh, next, be ready to be exposed to a new perspective. That means if your partner is saying something, then be ready to look at his perspective as well. You might not agree. It's it's not about agreeing, but be ready to be exposed to it. Don't just you know uh, disagree to it or don't just uh, uh, say that no, I don't agree with with this. No, no, ma'am, actually he's telling wrong. It's not like that. Nay, sir, ऐसा बिल्कुल नहीं होता. He's lying. Don't say that. Just give him some time and opportunity to speak. And last me put in the time means. Go to your sessions regularly. Make efforts regular. Make efforts 
and attend your sessions regularly. Don't drop out. Let's say first two sessions you both went together. Third may if he is there, you are not there. If you are there, he is not there. You both come late. You both leave early. You are not communicating well with the counselor. Don't do that. If you do all that, then the therapy will not be active. Okay. And then we have a healthy relationship balance. You can see this. Uh, it's you have uh, to spend time together, physical intimacy, shared interest, strong bond, shared perspective, shared thoughts and feelings. All of that will come under healthy relationship balance. And then we have building uh, shared qualities and gratitude. That's a worksheet. Again, I'll share it. You can do it. Um, that's not at all tough. Uh, if there's still any problem with uh, the worksheet, you can always ask me. Okay. There's some questions. Let me just take the questions. Stitch up. Srija, it's that's what I'm saying. That it's a choice. See, uh, whether if you are really suffering and you know that ending the relationship is a better option for you, then it is a choice for you. You can end it. But if you feel that there is some hope and I see whatever you are saying that the parents are not agreeing, I told you in the first instance itself, what the other person is not doing, we don't have a control over it. My husband will not criticize me. I don't have a control over it. My partner's parents will agree tomorrow. I don't have a control over it. But do I have a control to get married and sustain the relationship even without the parents' approval? Yes, do I have? If I have, then I can go ahead. If I don't have, then I should think about it more deeply, whether I should take the plunge or not. Correct. Yeah, uh, Sandhya, I gave the answer. We can go for online relationship counseling. We can online, um, we, we can online counsel them. Yeah. Okay, so friends, thank you. This was the end of it. If there are any questions, any feedback, anything you want to say, you can say. Thank you. Thank you, friends. On intervention. Yes, we can think of it. Yes, yes, I'll share the worksheets. Don't worry. Yes, get the recording as well. Yeah, PPT as well. Thank you. Yeah, about certificate, I'll speak. If there's any question, I'll answer. Mic is off. Am I not audible, friends? Thank you, Afreen. Thank you so much. Thank you, Divya. So many people. Yeah. Yeah, I do offer detailed sessions as well. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Friends, you could also leave your comments on the video that we share. There's a question whether the relationship is public, but they're not sure about the future. They're just going, going with the flow. And this still categories into situationship. No, no, no. Situationship is not that, friends. Situationship is where you are with one or many persons and both of them are comfortable with it. That is situation show. What you are saying is, I am with somebody, I have not made it public, whether it is situation show. No, that is not situation show. We both know that we want to be with each other, then that is not situation show. But if you are with many people at the same time and both of you are comfortable and have agreed upon this, then yes, that is situation show. Thank you, Jehan Azeeb. Thank you so much. Yeah, I'll talk about the certificate. Please stay. I'll talk about the certificate. Thank you, Mercy. Thank you, KP. Breadcrumbs. Okay. See, breadcrumbs, matlab, you show the other person that the relationship is very important. 
but you don't do anything that the person will feel important. You say that, okay, you're very important for me and I will talk to you even when I'm busy in meeting. But, but when the person calls you, you don't respond. You make a plan, but you cancel it at the last moment. You Whatever is in your talk is not in your action. That is breadcrumbing. If the client is confused about when to move on from a relationship and coming back to the person again and again, what to do? Okay. The client has to take a call. Whether the client is comfortable allowing the person every time. See, I talked about a very important concept in the first class. Escalation of commitment. Let, I mean, don't let your relationship be an escalation of commitment. The person is coming back to you again and again. And the other person is accepting. Why? Isn't there an escalation of commitment there? Is that right thing to do? Think about it. Thank you, Adi. Thank you so much. How to deal with breadcrumbing and gaslighting? You have to be assertive. You have to tell what you like, what you don't like. You have to make your map very clear, your love maps very clear so that the other person can imbibe them and act accordingly. Thank you, KP. Thank you so much. I can share case studies, yes. But not now, maybe in our further sessions. Thank you, Sangeeta. Thank you, Shrija. Thank you so much, everyone. Yeah. Okay, our next uh, uh, session is on gratitude and journaling therapy. All must attend it. It will be a it will be like a self-help uh, therapy course. You'll gain immensely from that. Okay. So thank you, friends. We'll close here.